Hi guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over the Mavericks. Now, Mavericks are designated as AGM-65s, but they come in different flavors. We have the Deltas, the Gs, the Hs, the Ks, and the Ls. Most of them are 300 pounders, and these 300 pounders are heavyweight penetrator warheads, and those would be the Gs, the Ks, and the Ls. Now, all of the 300 pounders can only be mounted on a single pylon each, so you can take a maximum of two of those. Meanwhile, the other ones are 125 pound shaped warheads, and these can be triple racked per station, so you can bring up to about six of them. And those would be the Deltas and the Hs. If you're ever confused about which Maverick you should bring, basically just bring the Deltas and you're fine for 99.99% .99 of the time. Alrighty, so let's get the Mavericks started up. Now, remember how I told you previously that uh, one of the things you want to do is turn the targeting pod on before you take off. The other thing that you're going to want to do, if you brought Mavericks, is to go to the Mavericks screen and turn the electrical optical system on, the EO. It's currently off, and it's going to take three minutes for it to turn on. One thing you have to uh, take note of is that if you run past the 40 or 45 minute mark, you will get a little white tape on the side that says EO warning or something to that extent. It's basically warning you that the Maverick has been turned on for way too long and the sensor in the Maverick has degraded. What this means is that you still can use the Maverick, however the range at which the Maverick will pick things up has been reduced and it will be a lot more finicky to try and lock things up because it's not going to see it as well. You can think of it as watching your TV screen for far too long and your eyes starting to go a little bit blurry and you know, you're starting to squint a little bit. Think of it that way. And the only way to remedy that situation is to turn the electrical optical system off by hitting this. And as soon as it's powered off, you can hit it and it's going to power back on in three minutes. And you're back to being okie dokie hunky dory. And now we have three seconds, two, one, and boom, there's our Maverick screen. Now here's the one problem that I see people have. Uh, they were going to see this Maverick screen and they think, everything's good, I'm ready to start firing the Maverick. Uh, the reality is that if you see the word sensor on the left hand side, what you're actually doing right now is you're using the Maverick Seeker's head to look around with this little camera that it has, which looks fairly familiar to what you're used to on the targeting pod. And you can slew it around, you can even lock things with it, but you're not going to be able to fire anything. And the reason is, if you go to this miss, we haven't actually selected it. So all you're doing is you're using the little camera on the Maverick to look around, and that's pretty much it. And they used to do that during the Gulf War, prior to the A-10s receiving the targeting pods, where they were using the Deltas with infrared imaging in order to try and spot things at a distance with it, um, or something to that extent. But uh, yeah, we're not going to be doing that, so uh, make sure that you actually select the Maverick, and we're going to take the H, which only has the TV screen, as you can see, no black, hot, white, hot imaging. And you just have the crosshairs. There's not really much information over here. You can change the slew rate and you know, how fast the slew is around uh, over here. But if I were to switch to it with coolie hat left long and slew around, you'll notice that as I move it to the bottom left, you see a little cursor indicator that will show you uh, which direction the Maverick Seeker head is actually looking in relation to its body. So, you know, the body's facing forward, but the Seeker head's moving over to the side. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is that we are currently in range. These Mavericks have a range of around uh, 9 nautical miles, although realistically it's more like 8 nautical miles. So as I slew it up and further away from me, this is the slant range. When it gets above a certain number, you see that we're within range around the 8 nautical miles. You can probably stretch it to 9 in a force correlate mode for these Mavericks, uh, but honestly I'm not going to show you how to do force correlate. Force correlate is essentially a mode in which you slew the targeting pod over to a spot, let's say there is a tank over there. Uh, it can even be outside of your actual firing range, and we can enter force correlate mode, basically put the Maverick roughly where, where it needs to be and launch it, and it basically fires like an air to ground missile to that point. It's extremely inaccurate, you'll almost never hit anything using this method, and it is worthless. And if anybody tells you you should learn how to do it, slap them in the face and tell them to fuck off. I'm not going to teach you how to do it, but you can definitely look up videos on it if you're interested. But I'm telling you right now, it is a pointless mode, don't bother with it. This is the default version of the screen, and just like the targeting pod, the little corners indicate that you're in the far zoomed out version, and if I was to press China hat forward short, it zooms in a little bit. So China hat forward short, zoom out, zoom in. 
there is no DMS up and down to incrementally increase the zoom and decrease the zoom like you can on the targeting pod. You only have trying to head forward short to zoom in, zoom out. This is it. That's all you get. The other thing is we're currently in an active pause, so it looks like this Maverick is currently ground stabilized, but it's actually not. These uh, Mavericks don't exactly ground stabilize. So if I was to undo the active pause right now, you'll notice how it moves with the body. And then when I move my sluice sensor and I let go, I just let go, it's trying to lock stuff onto the ground. It's not exactly seeing anything, it's just randomly locking things up. So as soon as I touch my sluice sensor, I'm actually telling the Maverick to start seeking for things and it'll automatically start to lock whatever it sees. But if I'm wobbling the aircraft while I do this, let's say I want to lock this thing, whatever that is, it's a tree or something like that, it's going to be kind of difficult to get it there. And if I use trying to head forward short, I can zoom in the seeker so I can see that better. And I will try to lock this up by spamming TMS up short at the same time. But notice how my aircraft is wobbling left and right. I'm wobbling left and right. I'm starting to lose my patience here, and it's obviously not going to lock this thing. It doesn't quite see that bush. But it will see the building instead. Bushes and light posts are technically like not even there, but buildings are. And while it's locked, I can't unlock it by moving the sluice sensor. If I want to unlock the Maverick, I have to press TMS down and then start slowing again, or I will press China hat aft short and bring the Maverick back to center. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to see if I can find a moving car and see if I'm going to be able to actually lock this vehicle without this Maverick freaking out on me. But as you can see, the Maverick has this problem where it will snap to other things and when an object comes in front of it it will track that instead or it will lose track of the vehicle. It has the same kind of problems that a targeting pod has but at least that you know that it is capable of tracking moving vehicles and a Maverick for all intents and purposes is a fire and forget weapon. So if I was to fire take a look at what happens on a Maverick screen. I'm gonna fire this weapon and you'll notice a new weapon is already up and running, and it is facing exactly the same position I just fired at. So if I was to press trying to head forward short, this is where I fired on that vehicle. And there is a reason for this. Uh, I forget what it's exactly called, but it has something to do with a rapid fire system for the Mavericks. So as you're looking with one Maverick, what you're doing is you're actually looking with every single Maverick Seeker head all of them are actually looking at a target. And this makes it so that when you fire one, the next one is up and running, it's already looking at that spot. So if you have multiple things to kill, you can do so very quickly. So for the time being, I'm actually just gonna switch over to the Deltas because they're just a lot less finicky. But one thing you're gonna immediately notice is that the Deltas are a little blurry. They're a lot tougher to make things out with it, but you'll notice that it will lock things up very easily, almost too easily. Like, look at that. It's tracking that vehicle like it's no problemo. And I know that it's tracking it well because you have the little crosshair and it is flashing and everything's Gucci. And if you don't want that, or if there's a tree that gets in the way and it's gonna lose that track, you're gonna need to just press TMS down, find the target again, and once it picks it up, there you go. Easy peasy. How much easier was that than the H's, right? The second thing you have to be aware of is the keyhole. There's a keyhole, and this is an image of it. You have to make sure that the crosshair that you see over here is within that keyhole. If it's not, then you risk the probability of the Maverick missing. After it launches, the secret head may not be within gimbal limits of where the target is, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Basically, just keep this crosshair within the keyhole and you'll have the best percent chance of it actually hitting. Now, the real life statistics for this Maverick is 80% hit rate. So, there's a 20% chance that you might miss. In DCS, that's even less than that. What we're looking at is like a 95 to 98% hit chance. So, with that said, let's just go ahead and whack this guy right now. Once you're within range and you're within this range scale and you have that plus and you're within the keyhole, you're basically good to fire. Let's go ahead and test that out. As you can see, the propellant here is very short, which is the reason why it has such a short range. But 
it's an extremely effective weapon. Now on the heads up display you're also going to notice that there is a circle which represents where the Maverick is looking. Uh, one thing that I like to do is if I'm going to visually try and acquire a target, you'll notice that you have the Maverick screen, but you also have the gun paper. And when you start working with things that are really close by, these things start overlapping, it's a pain in the butt. And that is the slant range from here to wherever the Maverick is pointing, just like the gun cross. So I like to just turn that off. That way the gun cross is gone and you're only looking at the Maverick. So what you could do technically is, without using the targeting pod, you can get your Maverick onto something very quickly and trying to target it. You know, with the helmet mounted display that we currently have in the A10, uh, it's easy just to use the targeting pod. But let's just assume that you know you have something you don't want to really bother with the targeting pod or anything like that. You're like, hey, there's a guy right there. I need to kill him. It's gonna kill my friendly. I would just move over look at it visually, be like, there is the moving vehicle right there. Try and get the pipper on and put spam TMS up. Look at that. It locked it up. Confirm. Fire. Boom. So sometimes what you're going to need to do is play around a little bit. Get it close by getting it visually where you need it to. So let's say I'm going to go here and try and press TMS up. And then, or TMS down to ground stabilize. So I'm going to press TMS down right now. I ground stabilize and unlocked something. I'm going to move it up and be like, no, no, something's right there. Almost, almost. And there it is. But you get the point. You can get the missile close enough by visually looking at something and pressing TMS up or TMS down to ground stabilize it. And then look at the Maverick and fine tune it with your slew sensor until you actually lock what it is you're looking for. Okay, so that's one way of engaging targets. Very simple, right? Like, there's nothing to this. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this works against targets. And I'm going to utilize the rapid fire mode of the Mavericks. In this instance, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and look over towards the objective. I know waypoint one is right over here, and there's some targets over there. So I could just take the Maverick, put it over the objective, and press DMS down right there. Get back up here and look at my Maverick screen. Oh yeah, there's there's definitely some stuff there. I'm gonna press trying to head forward short. And yeah, sure enough, there's some stuff. I don't know what the hell that is. Could be a school bus for all I know, but let's uh, let's get this thing in the keyhole and kill some things. Boom. I'm gonna zoom in. Boom. That white trail is just a smoke plume from the Maverick. There's the next target. Fire. And that's three Mavericks gone right there. So the point I'm trying to make is that if you can get your Maverick on point onto the target area and there is a cluster of stuff that you want to start firing at, this is a really easy way of killing a lot of targets. I would typically have six Mavericks on board, a triple rack like you can see here, but I would have a triple rack of the same Mavericks instead of having it different. I don't use H's, I'll just use the Deltas. So the H's are on the left and the Deltas are on the right. So that way, I could have killed six targets in a single pass right there, just because they're all clustered together. Now, doing it visually is one way, and that's like the gun ho way, but the real proper way is to use the targeting pod. And this is where things start to get a lot more accurate, but then, at the same time, it starts to get a little bit more difficult. Let's get our targeting pod up and running. I'm going to switch to it, and I'll press try to head forward long, which will slave the targeting pod over to our current selected speed which is our steer point point. and now I'm looking at the objective fantastic now with that in mind if I were to move this targeting pod around you'll notice that nothing's happening with the Maverick right because where is the speed right now is it where the targeting pod is looking no I never set a speed down right I never pressed TMS up long yet so where is the default speed if you remember from my previous episodes it's by default always going to be your currently selected steer point. Our steer point is steer point one. Steer point one is at this objective. So when I press trying to head forward long, all of my sensors will slave to that steer point. So if I press trying to head forward long, now my targeting pod just snapped back there that the Maverick was already looking there because I already pressed trying to head forward long. My Maverick is now slave to the speed. And if I was to press this button to switch to steer point two, 
both the Maverick and the Targeting Pod just snap to steer point two, which is over there. And here's steer point three, somewhere off to the left. We don't care about that. So switch back to steer point one. Okay, all sensors are slaved to the speed. Okay, but you know that helps me only to get it to the steer point, but I want to get it to where I'm slewing my Maverick to wherever my Targeting Pod is looking. Okay, so what we want to do is now create our own speed. So I'm going to take control of the Targeting Pod. I'm going to look over here. This is a Strela. It's a bad guy. You definitely want to kill that thing with a Maverick, right? So I'm looking at it. Now I'm going to press TMS up long. Now I've set my own manual speed. Fantastic. You'll notice that the Maverick now is looking towards the speed. Where's the speed? Well, it's where the Targeting Pod's looking. So if I was to move the Targeting Pod around, look what's happening with the Maverick screen on the left. It's following the speed. Right? And the speed is where the targeting pod's looking. Okay. Well, that makes life easier, right? And if the Maverick currently isn't looking towards the speed, all you have to do is press trying to head forward long, right? So let's just say that it's bore sighted right now. I'm going to press trying to head after short bore sighted, right? I'm going to look back to my targeting pod. Yeah, okay. You know, TMS up forward long in case you didn't set the speed down. And now just press trying to head forward long. Slave all sensors to speed. Targeting pod's are already looking at the speed. Well, the Maverick's now looking at this B. All right, so just switch over to the Maverick, lock it up with TMS up short, and then I fire. So there's the other problem. A lot of people think that as soon as you pressed China hat forward long to slave the Maverick over to the target, that you can now press the trigger, the weapon release button, that you're going to get the no track launch inhibit. Why? The reason is that all you've done is told the Maverick to look there, and that's it. You don't actually tell it to hunt and actually tell it to seek anything. So in order to actually tell it to seek anything, you can either press TMS up short to tell it to lock whatever is, is within that crosshair, or alternatively, if you, like I mentioned before, touch the slew sensor. If you just tap it, boom, now it's locking it up. Or just remember, as soon as you touch the slew sensor, if it's ground stabilized, if it's bore sighted, whatever, it is actively seeking things within its crosshairs as you're moving the seeker head around, okay? So keep that in mind. And remember, TMS down, if you've locked the wrong thing, you can then slew it over. Let's say it's a, I want to target the tent. All I do is slew it off of that, and I try to manually slew it over to the tent. Okay, that looks about right, right? That's not what I want. I want to slew it over to the target. Let's say you accidentally slewed it off to the side, and you've locked the tent, and you can't get it to the target. All you have to do is press trying to have forward long, slave all sensors to speed, the speed's looking right at the target, and you're going to force the Maverick to look at the speed. TMS up short, and it's locked. Could not be easier, right? Fantastic, and I can engage this thing right now, and everything's okie-dokie hunky-dory. Uh, here's the problem, though. Uh, I currently have two targets here. So I have this Strela here, and if I was to zoom out so you can see the full picture, I have APCs in the middle, which are not really a threat, I would not waste Mavericks on this. I would use my Mavericks, which are my long-range standoff weapons, against actual threats like SAMs and AAA first. These things, although they can shoot at me, are not as big of a threat. They don't have as much of a reach as these things, right? Because these things launch missiles at me. So I would use two of my Mavericks to kill this thing and this thing. But notice they're really far apart. One thing I could do is, okay, I move my targeting pod over here, and I'm going to slew my Maverick over to it, trying to have forward long. It's looking at it. Great. TMS up long to lock it. Fire. Okay, then I move back to my targeting pod, make coolie hat right long, then slew it over to this target. Awesome. Go back to the Maverick, trying to head forward long to slave sensors to speed. Great. TMS up long. Great, locked it, fire. Not too bad. It's just not too bad, right? But uh, imagine now that what you have in front of you are slightly longer range sands, right? And you don't really have the time to be slewing things around. Uh, what you may want to do is utilize the mark points. Okay, we're facing back towards the objective or I'm a little bit further back. I'm flying into this objective for the first time. Got my targeting pot out, right? Put my boat switch aft so I can see things with thermals. Awesome. I identify that there's APCs in the middle. I identify there's two strellas left and right. So I go, well, I need to strike these two things first, and then I'm going to go in and figure out what I'm going to do with the APCs later. 
So I'm going to utilize the mark point method. I'm going to mark point this Trella. So I'm going to go ahead and press TMS right short to set a mark point. There's no visual way of saying uh, on the targeting pod that you set a mark point. You're going to see it on the tad. And I'm going to go ahead and slow over to this guy. And I'm going to mark point him. TMS right short. Done. Awesome. These two things are mark pointed. Let's go ahead and confirm that that's actually true. Go to the tad. Oh, crap. There's nothing there. What's the... Da, da? And, well, remember that we need to switch from steer points. So let's turn the map off. Right now, I'm still looking at steer points. I have a bunch of steer points here because I'm in the steer point switch. Remember? It's my mission. And my mission for my steer point is got my steer points. So I'm going to move this to mark points so I don't look at my steer points anymore. All I see are my mark points. And you'll notice, hey, there it is. Now, there are two mark points there. They're just so close together that you can't really see it. So if I move my cursor over to that, press trying to head forward short, trying to head forward short, DMS forward, you'll notice, ah, mark point A, mark point P, and mark point Z. Remember, Z is the triangle with a Z in there. And that indicates the last place that I fired a weapon which means that if I ever lose track of where it is I last placed my weapon on an objective and I want to get my weapons back on there, I slew this over there, TMS up long, set a speed over there, and trying to head forward long, and yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we have mark point A and mark point B. Remember, I can use this rocker switch instead of using DMS up and down through my heads-up display, set a soy to move things around. So if I went coolly head up and I press DMS up and down, I'll scroll through mark point A and mark point B, as you can see. Or, alternatively, I can use this rocker switch. Right? And if I go one more, there's mark point Z. But we're not using that, so mark point A, mark point B. So here's where things get a little bit complicated, because if you try to use trying to head forward long for this, it's not going to work. I'm going to go ahead and press trying to head forward long right now. So what's going to happen? Nothing. Why? Well, what is trying to head forward long? Trying to head forward long is slave sensors to SPI. Where's my SPI? Well, SPI is where I put it. Remember, I set the SPI manually on a target, which is the targeting pod. Remember, this is the diamond right now, and it's got the targeting pod there, and it's got the wedding cake over it. It's not over steer point A or steer point B. Ooh, okay. So what do I do now? Well, if you press TMS down long, you will actually cancel your SPIs whatever you set manually. Okay, so I just cancel that SPI. And what happens to SPIs when you don't set a SPI down? It reverts back to the steer points. We don't have steer points, we have mark points. So they'll use mark points. So, okay, so now my SPI will always be the mark points. So if I move my steer point up and down, you'll notice the wedding cake will switch between them, right? Okay, so Good, 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 good. This this works. So what I could do technically over here is, in order to make this visualize a little bit better, I'm going to bring up my Maverick on the right screen. I'm going to press and hold the message button, and I'm going to select Maverick, and I'm going to replace the message button with the Maverick. So I'll use message. Now I can bring up the Maverick page over here. So, steer point A is right in front of you. I can switch over to the Maverick here, and if I press China Head Forward Long, I slave all sensors to my speed. Great! Now it's looking at that Strela on mark point A. And I press China Head Forward Short to zoom in a little bit. There it is. I can just press TMS Up Short to lock it, fire my Maverick, off she goes. And then all I have to do, steer point B. But now I have to slave the Maverick over to steer point B. So China head forward long now that I have steer point B selected. Cool. Now it's looking towards the second Strela. TMS up short. Lock that guy up. Press and fire. Quick and easy. So if you wanted to see how that worked real time, I'm going to go back to steer point A. I'm flying towards the objective. I have mark point A selected. China head forward long. Slave to it. TMS up short fire, switch to the second steer point, China head forward long to slave to that guy, trying to head forward short so I can see a little better, TMS up, make sure the cross is within the keyhole, fire. Da -da -da -da.
always easy. So I hope this lesson was very useful for you. I know we didn't go over every Maverick, including the Laser Maverick, but to be absolutely honest, just like the Force Correlate mode, use the Deltas. That is your best chance at actually killing anything. The Laser Guided Mavericks will always hit their targets, um, but you have to stay lazing in order for it to actually hit the target, which is why I think, personally, it's a useless weapon and I would not recommend that you use it. Hey, th wh wh what's the point? Do you gain absolutely nothing over using something like a Delta where you can fire, turn away, and just fuck off to the, whatever it is that you need to do? Whereas the next guy over using the Laser Maverick is like stuck there looking at the target until impact. And it is ineffective until that Maverick actually hits its target. And you're not extending your range either. So don't bother with the Laser Mavericks. It's more of a gimmick than it really is useful. If you want to, Go ahead and look up on the manual how to use it. Lays on, fire the Maverick, it seeks all the way until impact, you're done. Very simple to use, but don't use it, okay? And don't worry about those Ks or the Gs, those 300 pound um, Mavericks. Your regular 125 pounders will do the job and you're gonna be able to kill basically all vehicles that you see on the ground. Uh, ships, don't bother firing at ships. You're not going to even put a dent into ships, not even with the 300-pounder Mavericks. You would need, like, 20 A-10s firing Mavericks in order to kill a ship. So forget about it, okay? That's not your job. But other than that, all of those ground vehicles, those Deltas will kill it. So use the Deltas and forget about the rest. Anyway, the next lesson, we're going to be going over the radar warning receiver. That's this thing that makes all the beep bop boops and we're going to be using paint in order to get through that lesson so that's going to be fun so i'll see you guys in the next one bye